Thank you for tuning in to the Scenic City Crokinole Classic semifinal round. This is a Tier 1 National Crokinole Association event, and in this matchup we have, teaming up for the first time ever, the man, myth, and legend from Crokinole Center, Nathan Walsh, currently ranked 13th in the NCA. Partnered with him is Garrett Tracy, currently ranked 16th with him this being his debut in a semifinal round. Up against them are the infamous Beerling brothers, eight-time World Crokinole doubles champions Jason and Ray. Jason currently ranked sixth, and Ray currently ranked eighth in the NCA. To learn more about these players, watch our overview video, but with that, I'll pass it on to Jeremy. Let's get to the action. You know the players, you know the situation. Let's get down to the action. Nathan Walsh first act goes just a little bit long on that open 20 attempt. Let's see if Ray Beerling is able to convert on this and give themselves an early lead. They, I expect he was pushing for it, but uh, a little bit of a hit and stick there. Garrett Tracy with a nice short follow through, getting things back on track. Good answer by Jason Beerling, leveling things in the 20 cup. There, Nathan has found his range. Getting right down to the business of shooting open 20s. It was a fantastic day at uh, Scenic City up in Owen Sound. I believe it was said this was the 12th year of this tournament and uh, lots of strong competition. Nathan looking a little disappointed with that. There, there definitely was an opportunity for a 20 there. Oh, Ray's head was in the way, but it looks like he was unable to make contact. Garrett trying to angle in off that and disrupt this setup for Jason, but he was unable to do that. All right, the Beerling's up four to three in the 20. Oh, wow, commentary glitch there. They're all knotted up in the 20 cup, I'm sorry. Nice bump and run by Nathan Walsh. See if Ray's able to convert on this. He's Looks okay, yeah, he was just going for the touch because he was recognizing that red button was going straight into a peg. This is Jason Beerling's bread and butter right here, this one in front of him. Oh, he's going to leave that and go for the one inside. I was expecting him to angle in off the 10 because he is absolutely fantastic at the, they call him uh, Protractor. Protractor put a little bit of pro pace on that, lost his shooter. Walsh has an opportunity for another bump and run, which would give them a commanding, oh, that would have given them a commanding lead, put them up 220s in the 20 cup. Ray looking at his options here. I think he's just going to go for a single takeout 20. I shouldn't say just, that's a tough shot. Oh, unable to convert. I think he may have nicked the, uh, the first red peg or red disc on his way in. Garrett and Nathan, after a bit of discussion, decided just to do the hit and stick. That was not a gimme. Jason went for it there, unable to convert on that. Walsh and Tracy are in a pretty good position here against the hammer in this first shot with three on. Ray's going to be looking for something. He needs a 20, he needs a double, he needs something to turn this around. They've got two shots left. He gets a double, but uh, red is still two discs on. Nice shot by Garrett. Even if Jason's able to convert on a 20, he'd still be down to five. He was going for glory there. And uh, yeah, here's the fantastic shot that got things on track for Tracy and Walsh. Tracy and Walsh going up two to zero. Ray first to act in round number two. Starts with a nice 20. Garrett goes a little long and sets Jason up for what's likely to be a fairly, yes, easy touch 20 there for him. Didn't get the off, but I don't really think he cares. Nathan drains that 20. This has Ray set up to be able to hide on Garrett on the far side of the board. 
Not a fantastic hide, but still uh, a little bit tricky getting through the pegs. Garrett makes short work of that. Jason going to be looking to get the takeout and not set Nathan up. I expect that rolled a little further than he would would have liked. Mm. Ray would probably like to stay to the outside on this one, but uh, definitely easier to get the off in. Going for the 20 be a little bit greedy, but the beerlings are like that sometimes. <laughs> that is a compliment, not a judgment. Um, see what he's able to do. Okay, he opts to not get the takeout. He just wanted to. He was being cautious to not come in around that 20 in order to set Garrett up. Garrett secures the takeout without losing his own down in the five. Potentially a double for Jason Beerling. Mm. Good contact, but not quite able to convert on that. Good push by Walsh. Walsh and Tracy are down to 20 right now, but have two on. They had, they're they with Hammer. So, yeah, lots of Crokinole left in this match. Nice roll up into the 10. That's fantastic. I think what the players are looking at at this point is uh, with... Walsh and Tracy having hammer, they're going to want to have at least 20 to tie the round on the board or even 25 to steal another two points here. I shouldn't say steal. They've got hammer. Nice spot by Walsh. They're trying to keep their points on the board and also not open up a possibility for the Beerlings to get a double. Jason eyeing it up here. There's a slim chance at a double. Oh, unable to convert on that, and he didn't get anything off, let alone a double. If Nathan's able to hit and stick there, now they are in fantastic shape. Sitting with 25 on the board, good separation, not great options for, for uh, a double for the Beerlings. I'm wondering if Ray's going to take the 10 right in front of himself and try to roll over. Okay, there must have been an extended conversation there. A little bit of editing to save the viewers some waiting. There he goes for the double. Walsh and Tracy with two shots left. Beerlings with one shot left. Ooh. Garrett came back in a little close to that 20. Although, uh, yeah, another 20 at this point. An off 20 for the Beerlings would put them in great shape. But uh, looks like they're eyeing up the double. Ideally, they get the double and they roll their shooter out into, at least out into the 10. Mm. Oofka. Easy takeout. Walsh and Tracy go up 4 0 against the Beerling brothers. Nice roll in there by Garrett Tracy. As Garrett mentioned in the intro, this is the first time that uh, Garrett Tracy and Nathan Walsh have teamed up. They were both in need of a partner for this tournament, and uh, they weren't really sure. I know from talking to Garrett, he wasn't really sure. He was excited to partner with Nathan, but he was uh, cautiously optimistic as to how they would do. And they made the final four in a tough pool. There were some, uh, there were some strong teams, some strong players at this event. I think it was shots like that that helped them get there. Nice little uh, mini follow through 20 there. Walsh and Tracy up two 20s to zero in the 20s cup. Walsh pushed in a little bit there. Would have been nicer if he'd stayed back between the pegs, but not an easy shot for Ray. Let's see what he's able to do here. Oh, fantastic. I said it wasn't an easy shot for Ray. Ray doesn't need easy. He just needs possible. Garrett neutralizes that 20 by answering right back. Not sure if that was an intentional peel or if he was trying to roll over in front of Ray. Regardless, we're at force play back to the middle. That was a darn good miss by Nathan Walsh right there. Ooh. Good action off that, caught two pegs. 
Not sure if Garrett was hunting another 20 there or not. There was a lot of power on that. They are up 220s, but they're against the hammer, so certainly not out of the woods, but uh, in good shape, that's for sure. See what Walsh is going to do here. Looks like he's looking for the off and roll away a little bit. Oh, he was not looking for Peggy Sue. That is for sure. Whew. That changes the water on the beans. Ray unable to make him pay for that mistake. Let's see what Garrett's going for here. Lots of options, lots of possibilities. A little discussion with his partner. Garrett's going for the takeout, drift over, and hoping to use that other one as a... Ooh. He was hoping to, I think he was hoping to use that second one as a backboard for a 20, more so than looking for the double. Regardless, a fantastic double. Ooh, so close. Just barely lipped out of that 20. Oh, ho, ho. fantastic follow through right there. Bit of a nail in the coffin. They're not 100% mathematically out of it, but its door was basically slam shot on that shot. They need two misses out of Walsh, so they're going to need a takeout 20 and another miss out of Walsh. Didn't get the takeout 20. That seals it right there. Walsh and Tracy go up 6-0 in this race to nine. The other semifinal match taking place at the same time. Jeremy Tracy and Andrew Hutchinson against Josh Carfiello and Ron Langell. Ray first, or sorry, Jason first act comes up a little short. Fantastic shot by Nathan. He could have just gone for a touch 20 there, but the off 20 is so much better. Ray answers back with a 20 of his own. Walsh and Tracy with a slight advantage right now. Again, a good, a good miss. If you're going to miss, that's how to do it right there. Maybe that's a video idea for Garrett. Nice take out by Walsh, leaving that in uh, in a not fun spot for Ray. Not that tough to get the uh, the take out, that's for sure, but it certainly wasn't opening up the op the possibility of a 20. Nice take out by Garrett, keeping it away from Jason. He's going to be looking to use a peg here to come back off this. A little bit of action off the peg, but not quite enough. Oh, I'm not sure if Nathan was going. I think he was going for it, but maybe a little bit strong so that he, if he didn't get the 20, he'd end up exactly with this result far away from Ray Beerling. Again, not a tough shot when it comes to making contact, but definitely a tough shot when you're trying to uh, score a 20, get back in the round. little discussion between Tracy and Walsh where he wants to leave this disc where you leave the disc is so critical and that right there was a nice position he has opened up a possibility for Jason to go for an assist that is uh, hmm. instead he opts to push in he did get play back into the middle Nathan with yet another fantastic leave That can be a little bit annoying for Ray. He keeps getting left with takeouts, but not a possibility to do anything fun or round changing. <laughs> that is your job when you're playing double scrokinole to make sure the player to your left is does not have fun shots. Tracy and Walsh having hammer are in very good shape right now. Ray's going to be looking to find a way to whittle this back into the middle. Kind of gets it there, but but Tracy has this easy takeout sit on the outside on his side of the board. <laughs> 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 
they're just playing keep away or hide the button or call it what you want. Keep play out of the middle. That's what Tracy and Walsh are up to. Three shots remain. Two for Tracy and Walsh, one for the Beerlings. Nathan opts for that one. If he had taken the 10 in front of Ray, it would open up a possibility for a roll in 20. Not what they wanted. Instead, he tucks it nicely behind the peg. It's been the theme of this round that Ray just doesn't have any fun possibilities. He could try to go through his own. That is risky business. And even if I'm sure he could successfully make a valid shot, but and that looks like what he might be lining up, but he's going to need some good fortune off some posts in order to convert this. Ooh. Yeah, that was nice. He's got two tens now, and exactly what Garrett said, he needed that takeout stay in the 15 to win by a nickel. That's all you need. Tracy and Walsh go up 8-0. to zero. The Beerlings with their back to the wall in this race to nine. Walsh first to act. Puts the pressure on with this open 20. Ray answers back. Ooh, Garrett first to miss. Goes a little bit long and unfortunately leaves it close to that center hole. Jason unable to convert. Let's we'll see what Walsh is able to do here. He's going to at least want the 20. Ideally, he gets the off as well. That's okay. To go for the off, he may have uh, not gotten the 20. So it's a, that's a tough decision to make. Walsh and Tracy discussing a bit of strategy there, trying to figure out how to not set the Beerlings up to take advantage of their disc that is teetering on that center hole. Must have been another lengthy discussion there. There is no time limit in a semifinal match. Oh, Ray trying to get super fancy and bounce the red disc off the peg. If Garrett is able to convert this hangar 20, they are going to be in fantastic shape right here. And he does. Up two in the 20 cup. Jason, fantastic angle in 20 there. And he got the off. Mmm. Nathan makes the face that says, crap, I've left Ray Beerling an opening. Never a good idea. Mm, that was so close. Oh, beautiful roll, but just a little too far. Wow, that would have put them in even better shape. Unfazed, Jason dials in another open 20, tying it up 3-3. Beerlings with the hammer there in slight control of this round because they're tied in the 20 cup and they have hammer shots. So the pressure is, oh, that is what Garrett was trying to do on his last shot. Nice takeout through the pegs. All Tracy and Walsh need in this round is a tie with the race to nine. They tie this round and they'll win nine to one. Here's a chance angle in 20 would be golden right now. Oh, that was so close. So he had to go for it. Ray may just go for a touch 20 here. He may go for an off 20. Wowzer. Oh, that was a big mistake. Tracy's able to get a little bump and oh, he didn't. He needed that bump and run. The angle was a little bit odd, though. Tough one there. That was a, that was a, a, yeah. 
Some unideal shots there toward the end of that round on both, on the part of both teams. Eight two for Walsh and Tracy. Ray first to act. Drains that 20, putting the pressure on Garrett. Round and round we go. Walsh to complete the first lap. Oh, comes up a little short. A fair bit short, actually. That's, uh, yeah. Another what I would call good miss. Ray may be able to convert off this. Oh. <laughs> ah. Great shot by Ray Beerling. Oh, Super Steve. Blew it right through. Ray misses leaving an opening for Tracy and Walsh to get back into this round. They're currently down 220s with the hammer. Oh, good push by Garrett. Doesn't lose his shooter at least. But they're on the outside, not where they want to be. Walsh and Tracy are going to be doing everything they can to carve this back into the middle. They need some 20 action to have. Oh, great run. That's the trouble. You make a great shot, and it comes up just a little bit short. You often set your opponents up, and it has the opposite effect to what you're looking for. Still in this, four shots left each team, although Tracy and Walsh are running out of bullets quickly. Oh, that may seal it right there. Tracy and Walsh with three shots left. They're down 320s. They need a lot to go good for themselves and a lot to go bad for the Beerlings. See if Walsh can, that seals it right there. Walsh needed that 20, but it was pretty much a, pretty much a done deal already. All right, Beerlings battling their way back into this race to nine, bringing it back eight to four. If you ever find yourself sitting across from a Beerling, or especially the Beerlings, and you think, ah, I've got this. <laughs> think again, never count these two out. Interesting situation here. Let's see what Ray wants to do with this. They did lose one of their own, but they did not open up a great opportunity for Garrett. There may be just a, a really thin slice 20 here. Let's see what he does. Yeah, see the, the black disc robbed him. I think it was headed in the right direction. Beerlings are sitting quite comfortable right now. They have Hammer in this round. Tracy and Walsh just waiting for any sort of an opportunity here. Drain themselves a 20. Or, uh, oh, 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 well done. I have no idea if that was intentional or not. But uh, regardless, the result was fantastic. Jason going to be looking to keep up to Big Brother here with a 20 of his own. There it is. Puts them up a 20 with the hammer. Ooh, that was so close. Just barely lipping out. Another interesting situation sitting here. Two buttons all jammed up against each other and against a post. Ray going to be looking to remove something. Oh, what a great shot. Fantastic. How bad do we need it? We don't need it that bad. All right, yeah. I don't want to mm. Garrett and Walsh discussing if they want to try to go through their own to uh, manifest a 20 there. They do sit two discs on, but they are against the hammer. 
Jason with the takeout and just keeping it on the outside, leaving, uh, making Walsh's life uncomfortable. Again, easy, valid shot, but no opportunity to do something that's going to change this round. I think the biggest thing he was looking to do there was not open up a, a double takeout. There is, it is there, but it's going to take a great shot on the part of Ray Beerling. Not sure if he was going for it or not, but uh, mm, Garrett may be looking for the, the Hampston here, uh, bouncing back off that post. Tracy and Walsh being patient, waiting for a better opportunity. He was considering the bounce back off that peg and opted not to. Beerling's also being patient. Ray Abs or sorry, Jason absolutely had an angle in there if he wanted it, but it would have been uh, it would have been pretty risky. And they don't need to take that risk at this point. They are more or less in control this round. Ray keeping that disc on the far side from Garrett, so his only chance. Mm, I expect he was trying to come off that and catch a peg. He has definitely opened up a possibility for Jason here. There's a touch 20 opportunity there for Jason, but I just heard him say something about, do you want the double? You may look at this and go, oh, that's a no-brainer, go for the touch 20. But if he goes for it and doesn't get it, then uh, that could definitely change the trajectory of this round. Yeah. Biggest priority for Jason was to not give uh, Nathan much of an opportunity or not leave red discs on, because yeah, even if Nathan had been able to convert on that, all Ray would need would be a takeout. With the Beerlings already being up 20, all he's got to do is touch. There it is, 8-6, and they are storming back. <laughs> now that I rewatched the reaction from Ray, I really don't think that was intentional, but maybe it was. Oh, he lips out, giving Walsh an opportunity to take an early lead here. Nice. The way that was lined up, I think he knew that black disc was going into a peg, so he didn't even try for the takeout. All he wanted was the 20. Tracy and Walsh with hammer this time. Can they stop this steamroller that's coming back at them that is Jason and Ray Beerling? Oh, wowzer. Unfazed. Tracy and Walsh still in good shape here. They've got the hammer, knotted up in the 20s. Ray keeping the pressure on. Unfazed, Garrett drains his open 20. Oh, comes up a little short. It looks like Ray's not even gonna go for the 20. He wants the off and get away. Oh, and does he ever get away? What a great spot. Out in the 10. Unforced error. Unforced error out of Garrett Tracy. Yeah, he's saying something to the camera. I don't know what it was. Beerling go up 5-3 in the 20 cup. Good bid by Nathan Walsh. Mm, tough spot for Garrett. He's either forced to shoot over that 20 hole, which which uh, I always say you don't do that unless you have to. He made contact, didn't get caught up in the center, but he did lose his shooter. Door is open a crack. Oh, tough one. I think the door is about to be slammed shut. If Ray is able to convert this and go up six 20s to three, puts a ton of pressure on Walsh and Tracy. He gets the off as well. Now they're really in deep. They need mistakes out of the Beerlings and perfection of themselves. That slammed it shot right there. I don't think you should ever give up on a round until it is mathematically impossible. But uh, even if you need a 20 with every one of your shots left and you need horrible misses out of your opponent with every shot they have left, you may as well still hold on to a sliver of hope. Oh, we're knotted up 8-8. Eight eight. 
Beerlings with the hammer advantage due to them being the higher seed through the round robin. That's one of the reasons you want to do well. The other reason you want to do well because it was a pretty tough cut. The uh, Only the top four teams after a 15-game round robin, only the top four moved on. But it was also very important to finish high. That earns you the choice of who has hammer in that first round. Nathan a little annoyed with himself there as he leaves it close to the center hole for Ray Beerling to convert. Ray doesn't get the off, but I don't really think he's overly upset about that. They have the hammer. They are up a 20. And they also have momentum on their side. Walsh and Tracy had gone up 8-0 to zero in this race to nine. And then the Beerlings, never giving up on themselves, have stormed their way back to an 8-8 eight, eight tie. And they are in a pretty friendly position in this final round. Nathan going for it. That would have been nice. The upside is at least he, I believe he blocked the path of a 20 for Ray. Ray has been known to make something out of nothing. So let's see what he does here. They don't have to play super aggressive at this point. All right, Ray, the suspense is killing me here. What did happen? All right. Oh. Nice. That changes things a little bit. Beerling's still with the hammer, obviously. That doesn't change during a round. But they evened up the 20 count. Yeah, Jason was saying at least he'd get one off with the angle he was taking. But he got one off and he got a 20. Putting the pressure back on. All right. Nathan up to the task. He levels that 20 cup. 3-3. Three, three. Let's see. Is Ray going to go after this 20 here? It would be aggressive, but it is there for him. Oh. Not a 20, but uh, not a bad result either. We're down to five shots left on each team. What do you think? Play it safe for now? Yeah. Opting to play it safe, wait for a better opportunity. That was a nice lead by Garrett Tracy. He, uh, not a hide or anything, but he kept play in the middle. And, oh, yeah, that's what they were waiting for right there. Is Nathan Walsh able to convert on this? Oh, so close. Just a little bit more, and he would have had that 20. Ray says, get that out of my house. Pushes it right out there. Garrett has an option for an angle in here. Oh, a narrow miss again. If Jason Beerling can get the off in a 20 here, they've all but sealed it. Let's see how offensive he is feeling. Just wanted the off. That was smart. Not that the Beerlings need my approval. Their track record in doubles is pretty. Oh, oh, so close by Walsh. How many times have we heard that in this match? So close by Walsh and Tracy. Beerlings are up a 20. Each team has one shot left. Garrett needs an absolutely miraculous a little bit of a circus 20 to even make Jason Beerling shoot. No coaching in Crokinole, but somebody uh, chimed in from the side. Come on, Garrett. You had one job to do. One job to do in order to put pressure on Jason and make him make a valid shot. Fantastic comeback by the Beerlings. What a match. What a battle. The Beerlings move on to the finals of the Scenic City Battle. And I believe Garrett has a little promo coming up to let you know why you should definitely like, share, subscribe, and tune in to that fantastic matchup. With the Beerlings coming out on top, they'll be going up against Ron Langell and Josh Carfiello in the finals match at the Scenic City Crokinole Classic. If you like this match, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to join the expanding Crokinole universe. Make sure to also watch the other semifinal and stay tuned for the finals match coming your way very shortly. My name is Garrett Tracy. Make it a great day.